What was Michael Saylor's Michael Saylor. mistake? Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor. What was Michael Saylor wrong about? He's wrong because... Um... Michael Saylor. In the crypto space, few names resonate as strongly with the ethos of Bitcoin as his. The founder of MicroStrategy and an ardent supporter of Bitcoin, Saylor is one of the most prominent figures in the modern crypto world. However, even the most ardent enthusiasts are not immune from making mistakes. In this video, we delve into Michael Saylor's notable mistakes and try to understand where one of the most popular heroes of our time might have gone wrong. Someone shooting high definition video of me against my will and then using it to disparage me or make me look silly or undermine my brand. Saylor's journey into the world of Bitcoin began in August 2020 with MicroStrategy's decision to allocate a significant portion of its treasury reserves, $250 million, into Bitcoin. Driven by his concerns of inflation, Saylor initiated the investment of MicroStrategy's funds into Bitcoin. Consequently, the company's cash flows redirected towards the realm of cryptocurrency. While the move was lauded by many in the crypto community, Saylor's relentless purchasing of Bitcoin, despite market fluctuations, raises questions from traditional investors about the prudence of such a strategy. In February 2021, the company bought 19,452 Bitcoin for more than $1 billion in cash at an average price of approximately $52,765 per Bitcoin. In May 2021, Saylor proudly declared, Entities I control have now acquired 111,000 Bitcoin and have not sold a single Satoshi, BTC forever. The average price of Bitcoin by that time was $43,663. And we know what happened next. Bitcoin fell dramatically, falling first to $31,000 and then a year later to $16,000. The relentless accumulation strategy had left some scratching their heads because it was obvious that MicroStrategy at that moment was in the red by almost $5 billion. Let's go back to the 80s. In 1989, MicroStrategy crafted software specializing in data mining and business intelligence. A concept sparked by insights gained from a system dynamics theory course Saylor and his partners undertook at MIT. The aftermath of the dot-com bubble bursting in March 2000 significantly impacted MicroStrategy. Analysts highlighted the company's collapse as a pivotal moment. MicroStrategy's stock plummeted by 62% in a single day after the disclosure of accounting errors, wiping out $6 billion from MicroStrategy's market cap. This marked a conspicuous conclusion to the exuberant days of the early internet. Subsequently, the US Securities and Exchange Commission initiated and ultimately settled accounting charges against MicroStrategy, Saylor and other executives later that year. In the aftermath of this, Michael Saylor made a strategic decision to shift MicroStrategy's focus from its original business intelligence software to mobile software and telecommunication infrastructure. Saylor's commitment to the mobile sector, while innovative, proved to be somewhat premature. The market for mobile technology was not as mature as anticipated and MicroStrategy faced increased competition from more established players. The period saw the company struggling to gain traction in the mobile space, impacting its financial performance and market standing. But despite being a pioneer in technology, Saylor dismissed the potential of cryptocurrencies. He was skeptical about Bitcoin. And at that time, the cryptocurrency market was experiencing significant growth and attracting attention. MicroStrategy missed the opportunity to invest in Bitcoin during its early stages when prices were comparatively lower. In 2013 to 2019, as the cryptocurrency market continued to mature, the narrative around Bitcoin began to shift. Radar. Now it's starting to actually gain some traction. Institutions and major corporations started recognizing Bitcoin as a legitimate store of value and its potential as a hedge against inflation become increasingly evident. However, during this period, Saylor maintained his skepticism, failing to align with the changing sentiments within the business and financial communities. The turning point in Michael Saylor's perspective on Bitcoin came in 2020. Faced with a volatile global economic landscape, Saylor underwent a profound transformation in his understanding of cryptocurrencies. He recognized Bitcoin's scarcity, 
its potential as a hedge against currency devaluation, and its store of value attributes. This led to a dramatic shift in MicroStrategy's strategy, culminating in the decision to convert a significant portion of the company's treasury reserves into Bitcoin. In this unexpected reversal, Saylor became one of the most vocal advocates for Bitcoin. MicroStrategy's bold move to invest in Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset, starting in August 2020, demonstrated a newfound belief in the cryptocurrency's long-term potential. And now a quick break, because I'm thrilled to announce the upcoming return of Block Show, the leading event in the crypto and blockchain industry. This time, it's teaming up with Block Down, a pioneer in the Web3 conference scene. Get ready to join us in Hong Kong for this crypto celebration from May 8th to 9th. We are back in May 2024. Don't miss out. Check out the link in the description to learn more about the event. And remember, early bird tickets are limited. And now let's get back to Michael Saylor. On August 8th, 2022, Saylor resigned from his role as CEO and Fong Le, the former president, took over the position. Despite this transition, Saylor retained his position as the executive chairman of MicroStrategy. However, by August 31st, 2022, the Attorney General for the District of Columbia had already filed a lawsuit against Saylor for tax fraud. The allegations claimed that Saylor had unlawfully avoided over $25 million in DC taxes by falsely asserting residency in other jurisdictions. The lawsuit also implicated MicroStrategy, accusing the company of collaborating with Saylor to facilitate his tax evasion. It might seem like a completely different story is about to unfold here, a more somber one. However, that wasn't the case. Saylor took it upon himself to purchase even more Bitcoin. MicroStrategy took on debt to finance its Bitcoin acquisitions, with Saylor himself acknowledging the unconventional nature of the strategy. He stated, I don't think there's ever been a situation where a corporation has taken on debt to buy Bitcoin, and I think it's somewhat unprecedented. While Saylor's bold move demonstrated his confidence in Bitcoin's future, it also exposed MicroStrategy to significant financial risks. The value of Bitcoin is notoriously volatile, and using borrowed funds to invest in a highly unpredictable asset class can amplify both gains and losses. Critics argue that such a tactic could lead to financial instability for MicroStrategy if Bitcoin prices experienced a sustained downturn. Another aspect that raised eyebrows within the crypto community was Saylor's steadfast refusal to consider any other cryptocurrency. While Bitcoin has been a pioneer in the space, the emergence of new technologies and projects has expanded the landscape. Saylor's reluctance to explore alternatives or acknowledge the potential of other cryptocurrencies has been viewed by some as a missed opportunity for MicroStrategy to diversify its holdings and potentially enhance its overall portfolio performance. One of the criticisms stems from the timing of these massive Bitcoin purchases. MicroStrategy's acquisitions often coincide with periods of Bitcoin's peak valuation, leading some to argue that Saylor may be inadvertently contributing to the volatility he seeks to mitigate. Financial analysts noted, Saylor's buying spree seems to follow a pattern of FOMO, buying at the top of the market. Concentrating such a substantial portion of MicroStrategy's assets in a highly volatile asset like Bitcoin is not without its risks. While Saylor is confident in Bitcoin's long-term potential, critics argue that such heavy exposure to a single asset class may expose MicroStrategy and its shareholders to unnecessary risk. It's important to note that the intention here is not to diminish Michael Saylor's genuine enthusiasm for Bitcoin or the positive impact he has had on its mainstream adoption. Saylor's influence has undoubtedly played a crucial role in changing perceptions about Bitcoin in corporate boardrooms and institutional circles. In retrospect, Saylor's skepticism toward Bitcoin could be seen as a missed opportunity for MicroStrategy to position itself as an early adopter in the cryptocurrency space. However, his subsequent embrace of Bitcoin showcased a willingness to adapt and learn from past mistakes, ultimately leading MicroStrategy into a new era of financial innovation. Is it a mistake? Write in the comments. In the end, what we thought were Michael Saylor's mistakes turned out to be his win. It goes to show, taking risks is often the key to achieving big success. After all, only those who take risks achieve significant success.